right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Amira Alvarez, who is over in Charlotte, North Carolina. How are you doing, Amira? I'm doing great, John. How are you? I'm doing great. And Amira is the founder and CEO of The Unstoppable Woman. Um, she's got big dreams, big things she wants to accomplish, and she bets you do too. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, increasing your sales through conversation. So um, let's get straight into it, uh, Amira. When you help, uh, when you help business people uh, and salespeople increase their effectiveness through conversation. I mean, what do you mean by that? Because a lot of them would say, well, I have conversations all the time. I know how to converse. You know, I'm a salesperson. I talk to people all the time. Which is true. We talk to people all the time, but it's how you're talking to people that that matters. And if, if you're really in sales, you know that sales is service. You know that you're there to serve because they have a problem. And if your product or your service helps them solve that problem, it's a huge service to them. But oftentimes we don't connect the dots for people. We don't ask the right questions. We don't treat the, the, the person that we're talking to as, as our, our friend and colleague and real human being and really dig into what's going on for them so we can understand how we can help them. And the best way to do that is through conversation, is through a real authentic conversation. Yeah, because I feel like that a lot of times, uh, and especially because people have been doing a lot more uh, virtual meetings, uh, you know, obviously through the pandemic, and they will continue to do so, and uh, it, it'll definitely be a part going forward. I feel that people end up too often delivering monologues, even when they think they're having a conversation, they're actually just delivering a monologue, stopping, waiting for some, you know, feedback, and then continuing the monologue. Absolutely. You have to step out of the formulaic version of doing sales. You can't just, sure, you need to have the points that you're hitting, the things that you're listening for, the key things that you're, you're paying attention to, but you have to recognize it's a conversation and, and that conversation can go in a lot of different directions. Do you want to control the frame? Absolutely. Do you want to be the one who's asking the questions? For sure. So you have, to, but, but when the person answers, don't just run on to your next thing that's on in your script. Listen, like pay attention and, and, and really see, well, what are they actually saying here? And that's so important. People say things at the surface, that, that the words that they're using, but there's so much more meaning that you can glean if you're really paying attention in that conversation, really super, super present. You can feel their energy. Did it shift? Did they, did they shrink back? Did they move forward energetically? Did they do that in their body language? You can see that over zoom, mm -hmm. you know, whether you're in person or virtual, did they, did they hem or ha, right? Did they stutter over their words? I listen a ton, John, to tone of voice, right? Because that like that can give you so much information. Oh, they got nervous there, or that made them uncomfortable, or that made them excited, or they went off on it. Like, did they just go off on a total tangent? I work with my clients a lot on subconscious programming and blind spots and self sabotages from the the salesperson mm -hmm. perspective. But you can also be paying attention when you're asking questions and in conversation to where the the person you're talking to just went down a rabbit hole, and that's a sign, not that they're just distracted or going all over the place, but that there might be a real block here to move forward. And if you're willing to go a little bit deeper there, actually quite a bit deeper there, and gently you know, question and pursue that, you can find out exactly what's keeping them from saying yes, what would help them say yes, how you, what question you can answer without making them feel uncomfortable, right? And then it's a real conversation and not just, you know, a script. Yeah, because I know I, excellent points. And I think part of it, uh, as you said, is, you know, going deeper and not just taking the first thing that people say, but also uh, going deeper to, one, as you said, to maybe uncover and unwrap that there's a real opportunity is a real obstacle there but also going deeper to maybe uncover that yes there's an issue 
but it's not one of major urgency. It's not one that they're particularly going to take any action on. And if you just stayed at the superficial level, you could just go down that road of like just, you know, harping on that issue. And then at the end, you realize you wonder why you don't get a sale because there wasn't anything compelling there in the first place. You needed to go down deeper in some other areas. Correct. Like you're, you're chasing something that's not, not, it's to you from your mm -hmm. point of view or from maybe from the company's point of view that you're working for or, or, or the, the vision that you have of how you solve a problem, what they need. But if that's not really what they need, it's, it's, it's a disservice that you're doing. You're, you're not being authentic. You're not being, um, consider it you're not you're not being respectful if you're not really listening and digging into to what the person or the person representing the company really needs so you can't be afraid of asking those deeper questions and and really pausing and and listening when they answer paying attention to those yeah. nuances and and if you think about it amira when we, when we have conversations with other people just casual conversations i mean we often ask qualifying or valid questions or we try to validate or you know just make sure make sure make sure i understood what you just said there amira and let me repeat it back to you but in sense we often forget to do that and make an assumption and just take whatever you said instead of going that extra step of of clarifying or validating or making sure you understand or even giving the person an opportunity to elaborate 100 percent, and and it's both elaboration and just plain listening. I, I have a, a thing that I tell my clients. I'm like, I say, shut up and listen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like ask the question, ask the question with a real sense of curiosity, really wanting to know, and then shut up and listen. Because if you're in your head thinking about the next thing you're supposed to be saying, instead of paying attention to what they're saying to you, you're going to miss so much. So you really need to like, Stop, pay attention, listen, don't just keep driving the next thing. Yeah, yeah no, and, and I think that's the whole point is the whole listening part is because, uh, you know, real active listening doesn't come naturally to people, unfortunately, anymore. And um, we live in this shortcut world of bites and, you know, everything is in small chunks and we've no attention span and we're, our minds are all over the place. But active, active listening is something that you have to... <laughs> The, the clues in the title you have to actively do you have to focus you have to concentrate and it's a skill you you have to learn otherwise as you say you're going to miss so much it's so important and and you can practice this outside of the sales conversation well i was just going to say yeah. outside of the sales conversation but really everything is a sales conversation if you think mm -hmm. about it right like yeah. you're, you're you're sitting with your honey and you're talking about where you want to go for dinner and you know, are you listening? Like you can practice listening. You can practice listening to your kids. You can practice listening to your, your friends and you can really like, what happens if you're not prepping the next thing that you think you need to say while someone else is talking. And that mm -hmm. requires that you trust yourself, that you yeah. trust that you know what you're doing and that you can just respond once they're finished because you're, you're, that the, the thing that you do in your mind, and I, I know that you do it because I do it too. Like humans do this. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're like, oh, this is my retort. This is what I need to say next. But if you can break yourself of that habit and just breathe for a moment and be fully present with someone, it's like one of the, few, like, here's the thing that I've learned. And, and, and maybe you've learned this too, John, that people are starved for full presence and attention. They don't get it. They don't get it from their spouse. They don't get it from their kids. They don't get it from their boss. They don't get it from their employees. They don't get a sense of really being seen and heard and listened to. And if you can just, and I, I say it in kind of an in your face way, shut up and listen, right? Like if you mm -hmm. can just stay there and be present and, and really see someone, really hear someone, they're your client, okay? If they at all need what you sell, okay? If they don't need what you sell, mm -hmm. you know, they're not. But they're your client. And then it's just a matter of taking the next steps and going through your, 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 your process, if you will. But like someone who has been fully heard, oh my God. It, the, the, that is such a gift in this world. And they, the law of reciprocity, 
right? Law of reciprocity says, I just, I keep going. I'll, I'll stop in a moment. But the law of reciprocity says, you know, like people will want to give back to you the more you give to them. So I'm constantly giving stuff for free, you know, like in, in our business, our free downloads, our trainings, you're doing this podcast for free, right? Like this, this giving, this act of giving yeah. is the first law of receiving. And what, if you give listening the law of reciprocity is that they're going to want to give back. Now, that, does that always uh, result in a sale? Absolutely not. That would be, you know, crazy to say, yeah. but it, <laughs> it helps the sale tremendously. Yeah, well, and, and absolutely um, what you just said, it leaves a good experience. So whether they buy for you or not, it leaves a good experience and it means that they're more likely to talk about you and and say, I had... I mean, because let's face it, how often does somebody say to you, oh, listen, Amira, I, this, this salesperson called me the other day. I had a wonderful conversation. It was really interesting. They were such an interesting person. Okay, doesn't happen that often. So if you're going to differentiate yourself, just like you said, whether you get the sale or not, you will develop a reputation. Absolutely. And don't you want that reputation? Mm -hmm. Don't you want to be someone who people want to hang out with? rather than people like running from your phone call, running from your text, not right. Like, like mm -hmm. my clients, even the, my potential clients, even the people that don't become clients, they want to answer my texts. They want to respond to my, my voicemails, my emails, because I show up and I'm genuine with them. Like I'm right. really of service with them. Yeah. And I love that what well, you just uh, mentioned a moment ago <clears throat> about this full presence thing, because I really want to underline that for people. And I want you to consider this. All right, when was the think of the most recent conversations you had? And to your point, Amira, uh, was the person? Can you honestly say the person was fully listening? To you? Did they check their phone during while you were talking with them? Were they looking somewhere else? Were they were they distracted? And how did that make you feel? And then think about how do you think it makes people feel when you do that? And especially when you're in a sales situation, as you said, if you're not fully present and giving them your full attention, you're missing out on, on an opportunity to differentiate yourself from the get-go. 100%. And we, we get distracted, not just by our phones and social media mm -hmm. and the texts and all of that, but we get distracted by the thinking in our own mind. Yeah. And most of all, because we're jumping ahead, we're trying to say, think, okay, how am I going to close the sale? How am I going to close the sale? Or what does this person need next? Or I know best. I want to, I want to answer the question that hasn't even been asked yet. And you, you start making assumptions and that's the noise in your head. Not even just the, the distractions of the, the world, which, you know, in this day and age are, are many and we're all, I, you know, I count myself among the, the ADD, right? Like the, the oh. phone has made us jump in in lots of different directions. But when I'm on a sales call, that's off. I turn it over so that I can't see the, the, the little flashes because I, you know, we're all trained to go look at yeah. it. That's what it's done to us. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I accept personal responsibility around that and I turn it off. I turn it over. I put it on the other side of the room so that I'm not doing that. Or if it's a, you know, that's if it's a Zoom call, but if it's a cell phone call, then I, you know, it's still on the other side of the room because I, I have my headphones in, but I'm really mm -hmm. like, you, you got to pay attention. You got to be present. Yeah, no, and absolutely. And to your point is like, uh, as you mentioned earlier, you got to be present. You also got to uh, practice and learn the art of, of active, li active listening. And again, I would, I would point you back. We've all had that. We all know that person, right? Where if you sit down and have a conversation and there's something on your mind that you want to talk about and you, you say it to them and they immediately come back and relate it back to themselves and suddenly the conversation is all about them. That's a that's what you need to avoid because that's sometimes what happens in a sales conversation is yes, they will start the conversation, the prospect may say something and then they just latch onto it and suddenly like just go, go, go. And it's exactly like that person who you're sitting there going, uh, I thought I was going to talk about me. <laughs> right. Me, my needs, what my company yeah. needs, all of that. Right. And and here's the thing. If this is you, I get it. It comes from a place of feeling nervous and it actually mm -hmm. comes from a place of wanting to serve. And you, 
in, in wanting to help and wanting to offer the solution. But it, th that's the positive side of it. The, the, the shadow side of it, if you will, is, you know, if we were to put a, a label on it, it, it's like wanting to be a know-it-all or wanting to be, to prove yourself or wanting to validate that your, 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 you or your product is, is, is good enough. And the, the truth is people will pay more attention to you and trust you more the less you show up having to prove yourself. Being in that energy of having to prove yourself and thinking that you have to jump through a gazillion hoops and, you know, have a litany of answers and data and, and specs, there's a time and a place for that. But wait, slow down, wait to be asked for that, okay? And, and, and don't feel like you need to jump through hoops. That's just saying to someone, I'm desperate, I'm needy, I'm not confident in what I'm selling, I'm not really showing up of service, it's all about me, right? It's all about me and my needs, mm -hmm. it's not about you and your needs. Yeah, and uh, no, I totally, and what you said earlier <clears throat> about confidence and self-trust, I think that's an absolutely key part of it, because if you don't have the confidence in your own experience, if you don't have the confidence in your product or service that you're selling, then yeah, you're more likely to be on edge and feel like you need to prove yourself. If you're confident in yourself, if you're confident in your problem-solving abilities, if you're confident in the products, as you as you rightly point out, you will want to have a deep conversation because you want to make sure, number one, that you can help them, that the product's the right fit, but you also want to help them fix the right problem. 100%. Let me say one more thing about confidence. Mm -hmm. I, I frame this in my teaching, which, which can be a little bit on the, the spiritual and the esoteric side of sales, as the impression of increase. Okay, When I'm with someone, I want them to know that I can help them have more life that I can help them increase their life. So this is the, the impression of increase. Everyone wants more life. We were all born with a spiritual seed, if you will, that says grow, okay? Grow in the direction of your purpose, but grow. And we need things and solutions to help us grow. Okay, if we if we don't know how to do something that is part of how we are going to live out our purpose in this world, then we need help with that. And sometimes that is a service like you teach sales or you have a CRM, mm -hmm. right? Like this is something that's going to help people have more of what they want in life. And if we can impress upon others that we are someone who is advancing in life, that we are someone who can help them have more life they will pay attention. And that is an energetic thing. That is, that is how you hold yourself. That's how you, you show up, how you speak, how you communicate, the words that you use, the, the, the self-worth that you have. And I will tell you, John, I did not always have that. I did not always have that. I had a certain amount of self-confidence. I won't say that I was um, meek or timid or shy, but the, the ability now that I have to walk into a room and garner positive attention, have people say, oh, she has something that I want, and I don't even know why, but mm -hmm. I want that. That is what I want to communicate to, to salespeople everywhere and people who are just entrepreneurs and solo business owners and that, that are small business owners that are, are in sales for themselves. That, that they can be someone who is a magnet, if you will, who can just impress to the world, I can help you have what you want and people will come to you. And if you can do that from the moment you meet people all the way through the conversation, it helps the sale. Like you're already halfway there at that point because you've, you've communicated the trust, you've communicated the confidence already. Yeah, and, and I think this is an excellent point and, and one that deserves underlining again, because I always say, so when I'm, when I'm buying something, regardless of whether it's something for home or something for business, I want, I really want the salesperson to be dynamic. I want them to be knowledgeable. I want them to be confident. I want them to share information with me that I wouldn't be able to get any other ways, bring me their experience, their insights, all of that things, everything you say about that energy. I want that, I want that energy from them. I want to feed off of that. 
That's part of what we're buying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like it, you, everyone has had terrible sales experiences, right? You go in mm -hmm. and the, the salesperson is just punching a clock or like doesn't really care or doesn't really know anything. And it diminishes not only your desire, but let's say it's something that you just need to practically buy, right? And you're yeah. just going to buy it anyway. It diminishes the the experience and the value that you have in that. And then, then the next time, maybe you're not in such a urgent situation. You can shop around a little bit. You're, you're going someplace else. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and yet if you are someone who is really like passionate and you're communicating, this is great. And, and someone's feeding off of that. They'll, they'll come back. They want to work with you. They want to yeah. work with you. Yeah. And I, and I think that is so crucial, that piece. It's that, that, as you said, the, the energy piece, the feeling that you want to work with this pe person, because, you know, I pick up so many you know, voicemails and messages a day that are very monotone. I feel people reading off scripts and all of that. And to your point is, I feel like these people, obviously, they have something to offer somewhere, but they haven't been shown how to how to lift that or, or extract that from themselves and articulate it. Absolutely. And it's a challenge. So, you know, we're talking about the end result that we want. We want to be mm -hmm. someone who is like that. How do you get there? And this is fundamentally like when I, when I talk about like doing the, the inner work and the mindset yeah. piece and working on the subconscious programming and how you were raised, your identity, how you see yourself, which I mentioned earlier, your self-worth, right? That's, that's your self-image and how you see yourself is what you think you're worthy of in this world as well. And, and if you have a misapprehension, so I'm, uh, a misnomer, if you will, in terms of how you see yourself based on old conditioning from how you were brought up, you will continue to play that out until it is changed. And so if, if you really want to be an excellent salesperson, I think it's an 80-20 rule here. 20% tactics, understanding how the sales conversation mm -hmm. needs to go, what questions you need to ask, listening, all these tactical things that we've been talking about. 80% of it, though, is the inner game. Who do you need to be to be someone who actually makes that higher level sell, makes that the, the, make, exceeds the metrics every month, right? Like has the quantity, not just like the one, one and done, you know, one time mm -hmm. thing. And, and that is an inner game. And when I changed who I was being, can I share my story on that? Yes, please do. Please do. Okay. So, so I'm a solo, I, I was a solo entrepreneur at the time. It was my third year in business. I understood that I had to learn sales at a, at a higher level. Like mm -hmm. it was just a critical piece to the puzzle. And it was one of the things that I did in this year. And then, you know, mastered, I'm going to put that in quotes because I don't think you, we ever master anything, right? It's a, it, mm -hmm. we, we get better and better and better at it. Um, I'm a lifelong learner, but that year I really mastered sales and I went from making 138K, this was as, as a solo entrepreneur, I had a VA, right? A, mm -hmm. a, an assistant, 138K to 700K in one year. I five times my income. That was by mastering sales, back engineering it, looking at that, but I couldn't have done all that sales work, if I hadn't have done the deep identity piece, mm. the, the, the internal shift that I made and how I saw myself, what, what was possible for me, what I was worthy of receiving, okay? What level I could work at. I had to do all that inner game work, you know, add the tactical stuff that I was learning, and then I five times my income, okay? Mm. That's... that's and, and most entrepreneurs, solo entrepreneurs, don't do that in one year. Right. Okay, that's, yeah, that's yeah. A, no, for sure. I mean, that's extremely, extremely impressive uh, and totally shows the uh, the power of mindset. I mean, I would say the power, the mindset piece is so incredibly important and not just in sales, but in life in general. 100%. It helps us everywhere. You know, one of the things that that was critical to me growing my business with sales. And I feel like sales is a spiritual journey. Sales is like the biggest life lesson you could have. Like if you can be there and be present and not run away, you will learn so much about who you are and what you're capable of, and it will grow you as a person. And so that happened 
in the mindset piece of the sales, in the, the action piece of the sales, like it not, mindset doesn't count, by the way, if you don't take mm. action. Like, sure. Like, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's, <laughs> like you have to be on the field of, of play yeah. for sure. Um, and, and then it like that, that knowledge is completely transferable to all areas of your life. Like I went from being a couch potato to running a marathon. That's an identity shift. But that was also because I had faced the big, scary things in sales. Like I had faced my demons. I was like, if I can face that demon, I can face this demon, right? Relationships changed. I let, let go of a bunch of weight. Like all of, like it changed yeah. everything. So if your audience can look at sales as just the beginning part of a, as a, of a journey, right? To, to becoming the truth of who they are, it's, it's a fabulous tool. Yeah, no, absolutely. And what a wonderful, that's a wonderful way to end this because I love that. I love this whole idea about worthiness, about your journey and your journey to be the kind of best version of yourself and how you can get there through through sales or indeed any any role that you have if you do the mindset work. And then obviously you do the hard tactical work too because uh, uh, it's not just going to come on its own. It's a, it's a combination as most things are. But listen, Amir, this would be Amir, this has been fantastic. Uh, all of Amir's information is going to be below this video and links to her website. But before we go, please do tell us a little bit more about The Unstoppable Woman. Thanks for asking. So The Unstoppable Woman is a coaching company. I am the coach. We are a global company. We work with people all over the world, primarily women, though we have male clients as well. And we fundamentally help people break through their blocks to rapidly increasing their income. And we work with people at all stages of business, um, whether you're, you've hit a plateau at 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, or you're just starting out and you're like, where's my first 5k? Like we work with you exactly where you're at. And fundamentally the, the issues are the same. How do we change how you see yourself so that you can go do the big things that you want to do in your life? Plus the tactics, when you put those two things together, you, 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 you know, it's like rocket fuel. So yeah. that's what we do for our clients. And you can find us at the unstoppable woman.com. We have a bunch of free downloads and things that can help people. So you can find that at the unstoppable woman.com slash free stuff. And then we have a podcast and I would just love all your listeners. If they, if they loved what I sure. said, that would be like the best place for them to continue to connect is uh, the unstoppable woman.com slash listen. So perfect. And we're on That's all fine. the, we're on all the channels, all the podcast channels. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, the links will be uh, below this video. But listen, thanks again, uh, Amira. Those fantastic insights uh, and, and great, great advice. And I really encourage people to check out Amira's work. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.